This is The Drive with Dale Lally and Matt Williamson on your 24-7 home of the black and gold. SNR, Steelers Nation Radio. And welcome to The Drive. I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson, and it is a Friday. The Steelers don't play this weekend, uh, but we kicked off week nine of the NFL season last night with the uh, Jets. On Halloween. Knocking off the Houston Texans. And Matt just takes us into a into a more nuanced conversation. Okay. Um, the Houston Texans are not good. They got problems. They, they really do. They, they need this extra time off in a bad way. I mean, because especially after watching Stroud get beat up and he's kind of stumbling around and Will Anderson gets hurt in this game. And protection was a big problem. Their O line's been a problem all year. Tunsil's playing hurt. The left guard is Kendrick Green, enough said, you know, at the moment. The other guys have been, yeah. And then watching that game, I give the Jets some credit. Some of their stars, when they needed it most, Wilson, Adams, the two edge guys, Reddick and McDonald, Quinn and Williams, all came to play when they needed it. It was an ugly game overall. It was an awful game. It was an awful game. It really was. First was a, half was atrocious. First half. I mean, he had 32 yards passing, Rodgers. Yeah. And they go on the win. And Quarterly can't even carry the ball into over the uh, over the end zone. I yeah. mean, Thursday night's not a great product. But where I was going with this is I felt like, and I didn't watch the All-22, and they didn't talk about this much, but I thought some of their problems were no one's getting open. I mean, yeah. it just felt like Stroud's in the pocket doing his thing, making people miss, looking, looking to his left, looking to his right. Now what do I do? You know, like no one's getting open. And even a lot of the throws he attempted were not to open receivers. They weren't know, super right? accurate either. No, he didn't play great. He didn't I mean. play great. So here's so they've beaten the Colts twice. Good for them. That's huge for their game. division. Yeah. Right, right. But the two games were by a five combined points. Mm-hmm. So it's not like they blew the Colts out. Beat the Bears. Okay. They got smoked by the Vikings, 34-7. to Crushed. 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 Just yeah. destroyed. Beat the Jaguars. Beat the Bills. Okay. So you win your division games. Bad yeah. division. They'll probably win the division still. Smoked the Patriots, lost to the Packers, uh, and, and now lost to the Jets. I don't know if they're any good at all. I think they're— The win over the Bills looks good, but— That's the only win that stands out. Yeah. Beating the Colts is really important, yeah. but it's not— They're going to win their division. I agree. I but agree. But I don't know that they're a good— I, I would not fear if I'm the five seed in the AFC and they end up as the four— Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fear going to Houston to play them. I would probably pick the Ravens or Steelers in that game. Yeah. You know, as a road team. I mean, I'm almost certainly. I feel like they're the perfect example of the plexiglass principle. You know that this is a bad football team for years and years and years. And then, oh, you draft Stroud and Will Anderson yeah, two and you of the hire top a new three coach. Picks in the, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they moved up. To, it's good for them. And. You made a great, great stride. Now it's time to take a step backwards. You know, you bounce off the plexiglass. And it happens all the time in this game. They could be good, like, not, but they're in a much better spot now, obviously. Like, they have a yeah. foundation. There's expectations. There's a lot more night games, as we talk about a lot. You play a first-place schedule. You know, like, it's harder to maintain it year two. But I think they're here to stay for the next couple of years. You know, like, yeah. I think they're a good team. They're the team to invest in, I guess, in the South for the next handful of years, but I don't think this is their year. So they're now six and three. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh here's what they have upcoming. The Lions. They're dogging that game for they're sure. Dogging that game. It's at it's home. At. Yeah. But they're gonna be they're gonna lose that football game. I would think so. Then they're at Dallas. By then Micah Parsons should be back. I wonder if Nico is though. I think he's sort of on the horizon. But if that's, that's all your- they got it's, it's, I mean, Mixon, it. Mixon looks good right now. Mixon looks really good. Yeah. I, I was just dead wrong on him. I thought he looked bad in Bengal uniform last year. I think he's – they can't run the ball unless they hand to him. Yeah. And he's doing a lot on his own. Um, Nico would sure help. I think this long time off would sure help. But I don't think they're a contender contender. Yeah. Well, then they get the Titans and Jaguars. The Dolphins at home, okay. which should be interesting. It won't be a weather game for No, Miami. it's not a weather right, game for yeah. Miami. At the Chiefs, Ravens at home, at the Titans. There's four more losses there, probably. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they beat the Lions or Chiefs. So I, I think you're looking at them winning the A- – they're going to win the AFC South. I believe that, too. But it's going to be a 10 or 11 win team. But they're at nine now? They're, they're at six. Or, se- or six. Yeah. yeah. I guess. So, yeah, I think they get to 10. 
Okay. Yeah, that's the three seed. It's yeah. a four seed, right? That, that's probably what. If you lose to, well, you, you got the win over Buffalo, which helps. Mm-hmm. But is Buffalo only going to win ten games? I don't think so. I think no, Buffalo I, will be ahead of them. I think standing. Buffalo finishes ahead of them. Yeah. Kansas City is going to finish ahead of them. They play each other. They play each mm-hmm. other head to head. They still Baltimore head to head. Maybe that's a tiebreaker. If, if Baltimore the, if wins the Ravens North. actually, yeah, right. And Steeler fans may want the Ravens to lose that game. For sure, I would think so. Yeah, yeah. you don't yeah, want to. You don't want the Ravens right. to win. That. You know, yeah, I think you root against the Ravens no matter what, all the time. Um, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't fear going to Houston at all. No, or if you both win a playoff game and you get them in round two or whatever, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. No, I don't think they're a serious contender. Subject to change. I mean, Tunsil could get, look a lot better. He's been awful. He's been sure. really bad. He leads the league in penalties. It's like by a far margin too. Like I he's mean, got he gets, like fifteen penalties. He gets now. like two a game. Yeah, right, all the time. And he's playing hurt, and maybe he's shot. I don't know, but he doesn't look like close to the same player we've seen for the last five years. By the way, that's some of the Sauce Gardner stuff too. Like you see the the numbers. On, Sauce Gardner's only given up seven catches this year. Yeah, but he had like three he's penalties in that game last night. Too, yeah, <laughs> real grabby like those and long. Count. Yeah, yeah, but they don't show up. Yeah, that's just like the receivers, like Pickens, as many as he draws, doesn't show up. You know, yeah. um, where are you at on the Jets? Yeah. I think they're still alive. They're still they're they the Jets are a dangerous team. Yeah, but I don't think the Jets are. Con- Here's what they, they're three and six now. Okay. Like I would be selling pieces if they were lost last night. They are at the Cardinals. They favor in that game. Probably depends on what Arizona does this weekend. Yeah, let's say it's probably close. I mean, they were favored in the game last night. They're favored against the Steelers, and I thought that was way out of whack. Yeah. I thought last night was out of whack, and I fell into it, but I did hit the under. Which yeah. I was happy about. Um, so they play at at Arizona, then they get the Colts at home. Okay. That could be a huge game. Yeah, that's important. Then they get the Seahawks at home. Okay. At the Dolphins, at the Jaguars, Rams at home, at the Bills, and then the Dolphins again. It's not terrible. But I don't see them. There, there's at least two losses there, and you've already mm-hmm. got six. So yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. probably the best you're going to get to is nine and eight. I think that's fair. And then they probably lose some tiebreakers within they, the I don't think they can catch Buffalo. No. They uh, Buffalo I mean, I Buffalo may clinch. I saw something the other day. Buffalo may clinch by the end of this month. I mean, beating Miami this week would, would pretty much kind of eliminate them, yeah. them and then all of a sudden you got one team to compete with in your division. Yeah. Wow. I guess that is possible. Um I do think the Jets can compete for a seven one of the seven playoff spots. They'd have to get really hot. They'd have to get really hot, though. Because I just don't think there's a, the people ahead of them are that great. That's the thing. Colts, yeah. Denver, Chargers. They can compete with those teams. But I, I wouldn't fear what I saw from the Jets last night, though, either. No. No, I don't. I mean, he got the ball out in 2.2 seconds. That was the, the next-gen stuff on him. Yeah. Which, good for him. You know, I mean, it, but he's... He's not as accurate as he used to be. He's not as accurate as he used to be. And Corley was... So terrible about them. I mean, they could have got that. That should be a touchdown 99% yeah. of the time, of course. But I don't think Rodgers is a takeover games type of quarterback. No, he's not point. that guy anymore. He's a facilitator. Get it out. He's got two really good weapons, and they want those two and Hall to touch the ball all the time. I think that's good going back to the drawing board move. Um, defensive front was good, but the defense is a slight step back for sure than it was last year or how it's been. They're okay. They they can get hot, like you said. They're dangerous. They have stars. Yeah, their stars showed last night, but they also have holes too. I mean, there's there's a couple injuries on the horizon for that team too, and they're not very deep. Yeah, they're not they're not deep at all. So I, I we were talking, I, maybe it was power ranking day about mm-hmm. there being five good teams in the AFC. I don't know that, that might I, be a stretch. That might be a stretch. I don't know that I would put Houston in that same. Yeah, I wouldn't today. I might a month from now go. Yeah, ah, Houston's back. Okay, they're they're good, but I wouldn't today. Yeah, I mean they, they, they just, need this time off. Um, so really, right now, after that game last night, the Steelers move into the two seed in the Do AFC. They? Okay, behind Kansas City. Behind Kansas City. So it's Kansas City, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Houston, Denver, Baltimore. I and assume the if Buffalo wins, they take it back though. Uh, no, the Steelers have the, well. They would they would be seven and two, so they would move ahead of the Steelers in in that regard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But the Steelers right now have a better Buffalo's two conference losses. Hmm. Yeah, I knew the Houston one. That's not great for them. 
They're in good shape, though. I mean, I'm not worried at all about Buffalo. I think they're a really good team. But I don't, I don't really care if I'm the two or three or four seed or even no. five. No, being the five seed, like if you're one in one of those top, Kansas City's probably goes and goes. I would assume they're the wins one. thirteen games or fourteen yeah. games. I mean, their their history in the division is so strong. Maybe they'll be five and one in the West. I don't I mean, even know. I mean, they could lose this week. They got Tampa Bay. They got but Tampa, it's, but, but it's at home. I mean, they're favored by eight and a half points. I know. You know, I mean, but it's a losable game. Yes. It's a losable game. They don't blow anybody out. Then they get the Broncos at home. They're yeah. at the Bills. I'll probably pick the Bills in that I'll one. Probably pick the Bills as well. Yeah. At the Panthers. Ugh. Ugh, wow. Raiders at home. Chargers at home. I say they have a lot of division games left. At the Browns. Then they get the Texans. Then they're at the Steelers. Then they're at the Broncos. They're going to be resting people in that last game, probably. I mean, I can't imagine them not winning 14 games this year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they haven't lost one yet. Those teams, other than Buffalo, there wasn't any that jumped Realistically, out. Realistically, like, they could have their division wrapped up early soon. December. Yeah, right. I mean, it's Chargers and Denver just keep hanging around. That's what will slow that down. But you're right. I mean, by week 17, it might be over. Yeah. I mean, they could have the Which number one Which is when they play the Steelers, up. yeah. Is that when they play on Christmas? Yeah, yeah. We even thought about that when the schedule came out. Like, could they be in such good shape that Christmas Day they're resting people? That's, and somebody that's misconstrued that but... in the in the comments section of something, saying that we were wishing for injuries for the. I know like, that's not what we said. That's at not all. what we're saying. No, that's not, not what we're saying. We're saying they could be if you ha- if a guy has a minor injury. Yeah. You could rest him in that game and just hold him out because you're only play- you have four days of rest. You have four days of rest, and it's in that game's. In the grand scheme of things, might not be that meaningful for for Kansas City. Like I doubt it, but they could conceivably be undefeated. I mean, conceivably, they, 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 conceivably. they'll trip up somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Yeah. I, I don't like their chances in Buffalo. But no, they can, I don't either. They'll probably lose one to Denver or something like that. Yeah, they lost to Denver last year. They lost to the Raiders last mm-hmm. year. You know, so and they're not a powerhouse. They're not. No, that's the thing. But the when divisions you, when, aren't. Those two divisions aren't very. Those three divisions aren't very competitive. Yeah, I mean in the AFC. But if you look at the NFC, Detroit's good. Detroit, oh, yeah. Detroit right now is my number one team in the league. Me too. Um, I don't think Washington. They're six and two, but I don't think they're a six and two type team. I think they're more of a five hundred ish team that's had some mm-hmm. good. The Giants should have beaten them if they didn't lose their kicker. And hail mary, the hail mary last yeah, yeah. week. They very easily could be four and four right, right now. They're a wonderful story. It's a great story. Yeah, and I think they'll end up in the playoffs. Yeah. I don't know if they'll even win the division. I think Philly might be better than them right now. Yeah. But they're I just behind look them. At, what's, what do they got left here? Washington? Yeah, they got the Giants this week. Mm-hmm. It's in New York, though. I would say they're only favored by like four or five. Yeah. Then they get the Steelers. Then they're at the Eagles. Then they get the Cowboys. Then that Eagles a, game could de- determine the division. The Titans. And they're at the Saints. Then it's the Eagles again. Then it's the Falcons. And it's at the Cowboys. They could. There's a lot of those. That they are might struggle to get to, t- to 10 wins. Yeah. Like then, it's that again. It's that plexi. Like they're they're not a deep, talented roster. No, no, no. I mean, there's bad things on the horizon for them still too. They're overachieving, you yes. know, and they're getting some bounces. But if they and win, that's great. If they win ten games this year, the season is a success. Oh yeah, it's already a success. Yeah, I mean, frankly, because they, they got a quarterback, they got a coach. Yeah, they're, they're, they've rebuilt the culture quickly. Yeah, it's already a success. I mean, unless they get abused the rest every game by 30 points. But I mean it's definitely a success. The Falcons are already they might be better than Washington. A good team. Both those teams don't have good defenses right. and they have a lot of firepower. Um Arizona's leading the West right now. Yeah, they got some They're bit, not a good football yeah, I'm team. I'm not sure that's going to hold up. Green Bay, Green Bay is a good football team. Minnesota I believe is a good football team. Yeah. I think Minnesota rebounds in a big way this week. Yeah. The Eagles are a good football team. They're Trending that way in a yeah. good way. Could Dallas get back to being a good football team? I kind of feel like they're a year shot too. They're th- they're sort of remind me of the they're Jets. They're three and four though, so it's not, not horrible. They're not out of it. Out of it. Like the Jets, Dallas, Cincy are still dangerous. Yeah, you know they got quarterbacks. They've got recent success. I'm not sure if I'd put Miami in that category because I think Miami has to win in Buffalo this week. Yeah. Losing at Arizona was well. Here's the thing for, for, the, for the Cowboys: they're at the Falcons this week. Then they get the Texans. I like the Falcons big in that game. Yeah. Then they get the Texans. Uh, I'm sorry, Falcons. Then they get the Eagles and the Texans. Ooh. Then they play at Washington. Then they get the Giants, the Bengals, at the Panthers, Tampa Bay, and at the Eagles. And finish up with the Commanders. So my big takeaway there is these next four are all 
hinge games for them. Like they're yeah. not going to be huge favorites or dogs in any of them, but they could go all zero and four or in all of them. Yeah, I, I mean, if they were playing any of those four games today, I would pick against Dallas. Parsons comes back, which is great. I mean, that's like playing without T.J. Watt. I mean, it's a, a legit excuse. But if they even go two and two over that four game stretch, yeah, I don't think that's a playoff team. In the They're NFC five and six though. So. Yeah, I mean, still the, the NFC is so hard. Yeah, but is, are, I mean, are some of these teams going to be? Because right now, I think three teams from the north are going. Yeah, but there's only got there's only going to be one team from the <clears throat> from the uh, south. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. there's only going to be one. You think team. Tampa's dead? They're four and four right now, they're, and they just don't yeah. have much firepower, and they're yeah. probably going to lose in Kansas City on right. Monday night. You know, um, you're only going to get one team from the west. I would assume. So that leaves the door but open. But I don't know if Seattle and the Rams are worse than Dallas. I mean, that leaves, but that would leave Dallas fighting with Chicago mm-hmm. and maybe one of those West teams. Washington. Washington. Or the Eagles. I mean, right now, Washington's in. Washington I know, I know. and the Eagles are in. I just can't imagine three from that division going. I can't either. Especially if there's three from the North. Yeah. You know, they might have to beat Philly twice or beat Washington twice or whatever, you know. Well, it can't be three if there's three from the North. There's only three wild cards. That's what I mean. Right. I mean, I'm pretty (laughs) certain that three from the North are going. And I can't imagine Philly or Washington getting in or Dallas getting in ahead of those. Although we we talk about it. And Minnesota's on a two-game losing streak. Mm -hmm. I mean. I think this is an absolutely crucial game for them. Yeah. Like, they either rebound big without their left tackle, but Hawk comes back, or eh, maybe that's really a 500 team that got hot for a while. Yeah, you know? Cam Robinson is not a uh, no. replacement for Christian Derrissaw. No. I mean, they're lucky they got him compared to what they're playing with, yeah. but that's going to be a problem all year. No, I agree. Uh, but it's just interesting, mm-hmm. you know, how things change from game to game in, yeah. the, in the NFL. I was on a podcast this morning. Are the Jets back? Are they a contender? I'm like, I don't think so. A contender? Yeah. I'm like, I don't think so. No. I mean, they, they had a, what, a four or five game losing streak. They had a five game losing five, streak. You yeah. don't win one and suddenly become a contender. Right. You still have Short all the same issues that you had with, in that five game losing streak. And we were streak. texting back and forth, and this was true for both teams last night, but it was a sloppy oh, game. And awful. Just in general, I mean, they the are Jets not. Jets just a, do stupid stuff. I would say they're not a disciplined team no. at all. I don't trust them to know how to win. I think the quarterback has too much say in things, and he's not the player he used to be. If it's MVP Rodgers, different, yeah, different, different ball story. Game. Right, right, right. He's not that guy. He's not that guy. And that, folks, when any time that the Steelers have a high penalty game, yeah, yeah, the first thing that you read any somewhere uh, in, in comments or on social media, well, this is such an undisciplined team. No, the right. Jets are an undisciplined team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do this week in and week out, yep. making silly mistakes, dropping the ball before they go in the end zone. Um, oh. leading the league in penalty yardage. Yeah. It's been a, a season-long thing for them. Houston has been at the top of the league all year, too. But those are all, not all, but a high percentage of them are O-line ones. Yeah. Their holds, their pre-snap stuff. That's a little more correctable. But Jets do a lot of dumb stuff. Dumb stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, let's get to a break. He is the Matt Williamson. I'm Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. Matt and I will be back with more right after this. And we are back. I'm Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson, and this is The Drive on the Steelers Audio Network. And, of course, you can hear The Drive every Monday through Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, you can uh, listen to that anywhere you get Steelers Nation Radio. And, of course, the best way to do that is to download the Steelers uh, app on your phone and just uh, get it downloaded right into your phone. Easy. Or you can watch on YouTube. If you like that as well, uh, you can leave us your comments. Matt? Let's take a look at the quarterback index. Ah, okay. We haven't done that in a while. We haven't done that uh, since uh, last week where we saw where Russell Wilson jumped in there. Nick Shook does these on NFL.com. I'd like to think Wilson's on the rise. You would think. You'd think. At number 32. We got a new number 32 this week. Okay. Down four spots, Spencer Rattler. He's not going to start this week. Not going to start this week. Okay. He has been starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't I, I, I go through this every time we go through it. Is, is it whoever started last or it's who's who about started to? last, yes. Okay, then Rattler should definitely be last. He was awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you were hoping to get some glimpses out of him, and there was nothing not, really not going to Not good glimpses. Stand. 31, down seven spots, with his 44.4% completion percentage. Anthony Richardson. I think he's at that stage. I mean, it's sitting him down is the only 
only answer at the moment. Seven interceptions, yeah. six fumbles, tapping out of games. Yeah. I, mean, um, it's, I think he's swimming and needs to be calmed down. You know? At this point in his career, he has now played in 10 games. Okay. 10. I think he's probably finished six of them or four of them. Five of them. Okay. He say. left the game against the Steelers, unfortunately yeah. for the Steelers. If he right, stayed, right, if right. he'd have stayed in that game, the Steelers win it. No, oh, I think so. I mean, I I think adjusting he had, he had to hit his out. one big play. Yeah, know? yeah. I think. Well, I think definitely think it helped their causes that he went out. Yeah, Blacko gives them a way better chance. Gives, to play. Just, gives, just it makes them a more dangerous team. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. No, he need to be sit down. At thirty, he moves back into this. Bryce Young. I'd still rather play against Richardson than Young, or the other way around. I'd play Richardson any day of the week. I think he uh, stinks. I think they're both horrible. He completes forty-four percent of his passes. Yeah, he, he, he can't complete that. passes. You're an NFL quarterback, and you can't complete passes. I get it. I just think Young's horrific too. He's all, at least he's completing almost fifty-nine. Yeah, he's more of his accurate. Passes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at twenty-nine, down two spots, Mason Rudolph. Okay, I mean. He's a high-end backup. At 28, down five spots, Drake May. I'd put him ahead of everyone listed. I don't, I don't know if off my head everyone that started last week, but he's got it. I mean, he's a wild stallion. He's all over the place, but he does good things. At 27, down two spots. I thought he played well last week, Daniel Jones. I thought he played under – everyone blames him for everything. I, I don't think he's great. Don't get me no. wrong. No one does. But, I mean, that was not the reason they lost. No. Yeah, you know, he was fine. No, he kept him in the game, I thought. Yeah, yeah. He made some throws. He was fine. At 26, he was unranked last week. Gardner Minshew. I'd rather play against Gardner Minshew than Daniel Jones. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Definitely. I mean, how about Minshew versus Rudolph? I'd rather play against Minshew. Minshew... Seven games he's appeared, and he has eight interceptions and four fumbles. He's a lot more volatile. He is. And his hots aren't that hot. No, no. Like, I mean, he, he, he had an okay year for Indy, but he really limits what you can call and what you can do, too. You know, I mean, that's yeah. the thing about those guys is they can, they're relief pitchers. They can come in and get the job done and get a couple outs or whatever, but if you got to start every five days, it's like, I know how to play against them. Yeah, know? it's too easy. Yeah. Uh, at 25, up a spot, Bo Nix. He's trending the right way. I, I got no problem with that. I think you have to put him ahead of May at this point. Yeah. You know, he's more yeah. experienced and starting to show and, you know, he, he makes plays about, his legs. Yeah, Nix, 259 rushing yards and four touchdowns and hasn't it's fumbled. Legit, yeah. I mean, he's, he's a good runner. Yeah, he's been better than what I thought he would be. Yeah. I mean, now, they don't the ask season, him to throw the ball no, and he's, he's done his best things against bad teams, yeah. but there's bad teams out there. Yeah. 24 down five spots. Caleb Williams. He, he had a really brutal last day. Week. He's going to be up and down like crazy. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing about Daniels. I'm shocked Daniels isn't more, whoa, you got away with that one kind of stuff. Yeah. And maybe it's still coming for him. You know, I mean, it, it happens to almost every rookie. Williams has bright spots. He does a lot. People rave about him at the line of scrimmage. Like, that he has a lot on his plate. I wonder if that's hurting him, though. Like, even if you're great at the line of scrimmage and all the changes and all the mental stuff, it's just one more thing for a rookie to deal with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is that helping or hurting him, even if he's it's good nice at It's nice that you can do it, but it'd be right. nice if he didn't have to do it. Yeah. I mean, if you could just worry about make my read, throw the ball, move on. First down. At 23, down seven spots. This was before last night. Aaron Rodgers. Hmm. Seems a little harsh. He wasn't good last night, though. He hasn't been good all year. Yeah. Talk about low completion percentage, too. For as quick as he gets the ball out, his completion percentage for the year is it's okay. 61.6 yeah. going into last night. I mean, he got on 2.2 last night. That's end of career Ben stuff. I mean, that's yeah. just, get, I gotta, gotta go, you know? And he's a quick processor, but it's not that hard to play against. No. At 22, unranked before last week, Tua Tagovailoa. Seems a little harsh, too. Here's the thing, though. The Dolphins are the lowest-scoring team in the league. Okay. 
Losing to a tag of Iloa should not destroy oh, your season. I'm glad you went there. It, it shouldn't be that catastrophic. It's not losing Josh Allen. No. You know what I mean? This is like the Steelers losing Russell Wilson. See, I've heard the counter argument, which I don't agree with. They're like, well, that's why you pay this guy $60 million or $50 million or whatever it is. I'm like, my, I still can see. I mean, he's not yeah. special. He's not Mahomes. And if you're structured to the point where – a good NFL quarterback. Like, that wouldn't happen to Detroit. No. If, if Goff were out, they wouldn't be the lowest scoring offense in the league. No. You know, and he's a good player, but he's not a special player. Two has thrown three interceptions and has three fumbles in three games. Like, he is not a high-end quarterback. He just isn't. I also, I totally agree. Uh, I also think that there's – it gets washed away because people care about him and his body is scary and, you know, the concussion stuff. But – wasn't playing great when he no. got hurt, you know? No. I mean, last year, but last year he led the league in passing yards. You know, like, I'd probably have him higher on that list. But I guess we'll see who's ahead of him. At 21, wasn't rated last week, Jameis Winston. Who's better of those two? I'm a Winston guy. But he threw a couple he of the Ravens. He threw some balls last week that he got away with. <laughs> yes. At least three that I can think of. That like, story could have been a lot That could have been an interception. Different. That should have been an interception. I think he's still below, like, Rodgers and Tua to me. Put yeah. a couple games together where he's very volatile. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he just benefits from not being Deshaun Watson. Well, there's that, which yeah. is fine. You know, there's value to that too. He'll be eating those W's this year. Yeah, maybe. people love him. Uh, at twenty, down seven spots, and this is really kind of how he's played of late the last couple of games. Dak Prescott. It's been rough. I mean, this is true for twenty six guys on this list. He needs good stuff around him. Yeah. You know. And they don't run the ball at all. They can't the run the ball. The line starting yeah. to crumble. I mean, they have it's him and CD versus the world. And it takes a toll. Defense isn't making plays for him. But that doesn't excuse. He's near the league, top of the league in turnover-worthy plays. Yeah. That's not usually who he is. But it, it all adds up. And it doesn't mean he should throw it to the other team. At 19 up three spots, Trevor Lawrence. Gradually getting back. I mean, I don't know that he'll ever be elite. But he's... Well, all the receivers are hurt now. So I, saying, I know ATN, Gabe Davis, and Thomas are all highly questionable. You know, game time decisions. Uh, their season's about to crumble. I like him though. I mean, I, I think this is. I think he's trending the right direction. At eighteen, holding steady, Russell Wilson. I'd have him higher than everybody listed. It's only two games. I don't know how much value you can put in that if you're doing a list, but. He said two. I think the second game was a lot better than the first. I do too. Yeah. 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 I mean, I know they didn't score quite as many points, but I thought he threw the football better. There definitely was a rust factor to start the first game. Yeah. Um, he's been good. It's 17 up four spots. So he leapfrogged Russell Wilson. Jalen Hurts. It was his best game yet. I'm not a big believer. Against the Bengals. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a big believer, but. I've thought he's overrated even when they were going to Super Bowls and stuff, but you can win with him. At 16, down two spots, Kyler Murray. I thought he had one of his best games, too. Um, I would have him higher than that, I have a feeling. I mean, he's a tough guy to play against, too. I mean, he is a playmaker. I think that offense is starting to round into shape pretty well. But the beginning of the season wasn't great for him. At 15, up five spots, so he... Leapfrog Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert. I think he should be so much higher. I think he's having a tremendous year. They just doesn't have volume. Yeah. Started the season slow with his injury, but he looks great now. I mean, he might be like five for me. At 14, down five spots, Geno Smith. Starting to come back to earth a little. He's a streaky player. Yeah. Like, he'll have a good month and a bad month. Now, it's not a bad month, but it's not top 10 stuff like he started the season. Their O-line's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. At 13, up two spots, Kirk Cousins. Is who he is. I mean, makes plays. Probably has a ceiling. Probably won't get much higher on that list all year than right about there. But that's worth $50 million or whatever. At 12, holding steady, Brock Purdy. Not great showing of lately. That last one. He has seven interceptions and five fumbles in eight games. So like, he he doesn't play the close to the vest Jimmy Garoppolo yeah. 
style. And it's only 10 touchdown passes. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, so it's... I mean, it's, it's good. The completion percentage is way down from where it's usually at because he doesn't have guys running open all over right. the place. Like, like it, I don't think he's an elevator at all. Like, I was about to say, imagine Justin Herbert in that offense. Yeah. I mean, like, there's no way they'd both be ranked there. And I was a massive Purdy skeptic, even his entire rookie year. I even said things like, I'd rather pick it than Purdy, you know, after one season. But I never am going to think he's a top 10 guy. You yeah. Know? Or an elevator, for that matter. At 11, down a spot, Baker Mayfield. He's had a really good year, but he makes a lot of – he's a lot volatile of, tool. Again, nine interceptions he's thrown in eight games, uh, four fumbles. Him and Winston have a lot in common. They do. They really They're almost do. the same guy. You're right. First overall pick. They're about the same athletically. They're going to put the, the ball in harm's way. Yeah, gonna, they do They're going to take stuff. chances. Right, right, right. And, and everybody looks at, well, he threw for all these yards. And look, 21 touchdown passes. 21 touchdown passes is great. It is. But he's also got nine interceptions, so he's throwing a lot to the other team, too. Mm-hmm. Like, he'll take risks. He wouldn't be in my top. He'd be five spots lower than that for me. At 10, up one spot, Sam Darnold. Who? That seems a little rich. Seems a little rich. Yeah. Let's see how things – that's kind of an incomplete grade for me, but let's see how it goes. At nine, down a spot, Jordan Love. He's kind of in that same boat area as Winston, and oh, like, he puts the ball in harm's way. He is a, a lot of fun to watch. He can make throws that only three guys on this list can, and he will try them. <laughs> you know, and it doesn't For better always, or worse. Yeah, and he's still learning, but boy, I'd love him to be my quarterback. He's fun to watch. At eight, up nine spots. We thought he was low last week. Matthew Stafford. Good. Imagine when you give him. Cup and Nakua back. I mean, well, that, that's we a, don't have that's to imagine. A, that's they right back last week. <laughs> that's why they were so hard on him. Yeah, I mean, that's not his fault. At seven, holding steady, Jaden Daniels. Okay. I'm excited to really dig into him next week. I mean, I think he's a tremendous player, tremendous story. I bet a little bit of it, it's – I'm not sure that it's super sustainable that we're over the hump and he's a top seven guy forever and ever and ever. Yeah. That, that's hard to do. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, six, C.J. Stroud. I was wondering. I mean, it's his stock's as low as it's ever been, and he was not good last night. But I also think things are crumbling around him, too. He would be a little lower for me right now. Five is Jared Goff. Playing phenomenal. Four is Joe Burrow, down a spot. Okay. No Higgins this week again, by the way. Yeah. Uh, three down a spot, Patrick Mahomes. The weird one. It's the exact same conversation. He has more interceptions than touchdown passes. He threw uh, his was... first touchdown pass this month last week against the Raiders. I mean, how he's playing is 16. Yeah. But you can't put him at 16. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's how he's playing. Uh, two is up two spots is Josh Allen, and number one is Lamar. Okay. I mean, they're having the best two years along with Goff. Like, yeah. I think if there, if I were to bet who would win the MVP today, I would think Lamar, Goff, and Allen were the, are probably the shortest odds in Vegas. Is there an issue, after we go through this, this quarterback list, of teams developing young quarterbacks? Are they playing oh. too early, too, too much too early? I think the short answer is yes. Because I think the... Offensive lines aren't there for them. The offenses are more complex than ever. It's harder. I, th- I think it's a little harder now than, like, RG3 to just rely on your legs to get you out of things, you know, because that's, that's it's an important piece, don't get me wrong, but defenses have caught on to that too, you know, and then you take a lot of hits and then you get in, like, the Richardson mode where now I'm getting hit all the time and I can't finish games. Yeah. I mean, I just think it's the nature of the league, which is unfortunate, that these coaches don't have enough leeway either. Like, I, you can't Bradshaw it. They don't have of enough course, time. That's yeah. for sure. There's just not enough time at any yeah, point. At any point. And it's so hard, and it's such an adjust, adjustment. And the college game's so much different. And all these grown men in the locker room looking at you as a young kid, like, you're our leader now, and I'm 33, and I've got millions in the bank, and, you know... 
I don't know if I'm ready to be the leader now, you know? So, yeah. Then I definitely think there's value in these reclamation projects, too. Fields, Darnold, you know, all the way. There's so many of them this year. But uh, just because you're another team's trash doesn't mean you can't have a good career, you know? Yeah. You know? I think that's what we're kind of learning here. I mean, if we go through that list again. Mayfield's pretty high up A bunch there. of those guys right. that have been, they started their career somewhere else other than where they're at now. Yeah. And, and it's not like somebody, and they gave up on them. Yeah. You know, or, you know, moved on from on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure what the answer is, though. Like, Chicago with Fields is a great example. I mean, they go through coach, a couple coaches, a bunch of different coordinators. I do think the Rooney way of stability is something more teams should at least try to emulate. Especially if you've got a, a young quarterback. You yeah. got to, like, you can't change stuff on him constantly. And it depends who your young quarterback is, too. Like, if it's Levis, all right, he was a second-round pick. You know, yeah. it's like, we wanted to see what we had in him. We weren't going to take But that's one. part of the problem is it's, it, a lot of these guys are getting overdrafted. That's absolutely true. There's no way on God's green earth that Anthony Richardson should have been a top-five draft pick. I was going to say Daniel Jones. I mean, like, Daniel Jones is another Richardson one. at least has more traits. They shouldn't be top— Trey Lance. They shouldn't be top-ten picks. No one talks about Trey Lance anymore. Yeah. I mean, he's— he can't complete passes either. People you get know, mad about the Steelers right. drafting Kenny Pickett. He was 20th. He was 20th. 20th. Right. And even like this class, six went in the what, the top 14 or whatever it was? I forget what the number was. Yeah. Maybe 15. Two are going to be good. Right. You know, one might be great. Two others will be good. The other two will be Pickett Ritter on some other team before you know it types. You know, yeah. that's probably how it'll go. But I just think. But otherwise, how do you get them? Everybody's chasing them. And what's the answer, though? I mean, everybody wants Mahomes, but settle for Dak. Right. You know what I mean? Who was a fifth-round pick. Yeah. You know, Mahomes, they had to trade up to get him where mm -hmm. they got him. And they were fortunate. I mean, I think sitting his first year helped him a lot. Yeah. And, like, Allen reinvented himself. Lamar didn't have uh, the world on his shoulders right away. He was a 30th pick or whatever it was. Flacco was a starter. They eased him in, you know? It's not easy. Not easy. No. Anyways, let's get to a break. He is the Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. Matt and I will be back with more right after this. And we are back. I'm Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And, uh, Matt, as you mentioned uh, earlier in the show, no T. Higgins again for the, uh, yeah. the Bengals this week. And Orlando Brown's out, too. Well, both of them are doubtful, which yeah. almost always means they're not playing. Now, they play the Raiders this week. Yeah. So... I would think they win that game no matter what, but it's a crucial week for them. I mean, if you yeah. lose – I came into this week in the AFC saying the Jets, Dolphins, Bengals are either win or sell at the trade deadline teams. And since he has a game ahead of those two, and the Jets won last night, and since he plays the Raiders, so that might not be as crucial as we thought. Miami going to Buffalo, after losing to Arizona – it could be, you know, sell everything after that game. Yeah, I don't think they will. I don't think they will either. I don't yeah. think that's their DNA, you know. No, no I don't think so. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that, that's – Could Higgins get moved? Not if they win. I, I, well, here's the problem, though. He's hurt. He's hurt. And the trade deadline's Tuesday. Who's mm -hmm. trading for yeah. an injured T. Higgins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not doing it. Right. It's the same thing with, with uh, um, what's his face in Carolina? Um Thielen. Thielen. Yeah, yeah. You can't trade for Thielen right now. He hasn't played in two see. months. Right, right. Like, you can't do that. No. Yeah. I think since he's in trouble. Yeah. Although I think they win. I think they should. Yeah. But you lose that one, it's real trouble. Yeah. Um, we're just having a discussion. Candy bars. Ah. And there was a mallow cup out there. Right. I, hadn't, I thought they were extinct, too. There's some candy that we were just talking I about. I didn't have one in a long, long time. See, you seem to like marshmallow and coconut. Those are, in, in the candy bar world, those are maybe my bottom two ingredients. Marshmallows. Yeah. I real love, down the list. I love marshmallow. Did you I ever mean, just, you never just like got the big thing of the whip, uh, the marshmallow whip, and just eat it right out of the. Uh, that would be, the, I'd rather <laughs> eat What about, what about eat roasting beets. a marshmallow over the fire? That's okay. I haven't done it in 20 years. I mean, <laughs> I have probably 40 years now that I think about it. I was a kid. 
some more, more of those. Okay. Yeah. But like Trust me, I'm not super calorie conscious in terms of my <laughs> intake. They're not worth it to me. Yeah, you know, okay. like to me, like I gotta at least kind of like it. And they're like, eh. like I'd have to fight to get through a marshmallow. And coconuts, fine. Like on a desert island, I'll eat coconuts all day long, like Tom Hanks. But I don't pick it. We drip the juice out and try to. Drink oh it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a. We were talking about my faves are hundred grands. Those were good. Yeah, we gave those out last night on purpose so oh, nice. I could have one. And Butterfinger. Those are big. You know, Baby I Ruth to, I was big on. I used to love the Marathon Bar. Remember the Marathon Bar? And all it was was caramel. You a lot of almost extinct it stuff. It was just caramel and chocolate, but the caramel was all like kind of swirled, so it was kind of like getting a eh, just. I'm having a hard time remembering some I of these. I love those things. Okay. They were good. We were talking about Clark Bars. It a, it's a thousand gram bar without the without the. The Rice, Rice Krispies. Krispies, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's funny. Candy bars are kind of like Mexican food. There's only like eight ingredients, and no matter how you mix them up, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're doing like some of the these candies that they do in, in other countries and stuff. Well, there's some crazy bonkers. Some crazy stuff. Some stuff, yeah, that I don't know much about. Here's a very interesting, or here's a... a splits people. You a licorice guy or not? Oh, I love licorice. I do too. Yeah. I think they have to be old though. Especially black liquors. There's people that really don't like black liquors. I can eat black liquors. Like crazy. Yeah, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. No, it's yeah, real good. Right, right, right. Um, I don't eat nearly You're as much of this. Yeah, You're young, young fella over here. Black yeah. liquors, barf. You just stick to the hotline, Justin. You don't worry about that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, there, there used to be so many more candies back in the day, and now it's like. Is that true? I just don't eat candy much. I only know this stuff around Halloween. I just think feel like there's a lot of them that aren't around anymore. That used to be. I only eat candy because it sits in the bowl at this building. That's like true. I would never grab one at home. That's true. I don't. I don't <laughs> eat. I eat candy nowhere else but here. <laughs> nowhere else but here. Because I'm bored. Unless it's Halloween. Yeah. One day a year. So 364 days a year, I do not eat candy unless it's right around the corner in the kitchen. And I'm really not even supposed to be eating that. But I'd well, say you're also diabetic too. Yeah, right? That's so. not exactly the best move for you. Yeah. But like a pie, or a pastry. I'm always that for sure. I mean, there's sweets in our house, but not a candy bar. Yeah. There you have it. There you go. Clark, so, though. I mean, keeping it, since it's a Steeler game, Clark bars were classic. Clark bars were, yeah. yeah did, did, you, did you see any of those last night? Are they I didn't still see any Clark bars. I did see a Zagnut. Say, you mentioned a Zagnut. A Zagnut. Though. That's a direct cousin of a Clark bar, right? Yes. Yeah. Like, they have the same mom. Like, they're, no, they have the same, their moms are sisters. Like, they're, they're first cousins. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. Well, they might even be brother and sister. They could be. They're pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Watch him call it was kind of my list too. Oh, the watch him call it was good. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that was a good one. Okay. Huh. Um. Yeah, but are those around anymore? I don't know. I haven't seen a watch him call it forever. I don't know for sure. I don't even know what a watch him call it was in it. Definitely some rice crispy stuff. And definitely rice crispy. And there was chocolate on how top. How they hold it all together? There was something. There's some glue in there. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. It might have been glue. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what I could eat a million of two are Jolly Ranchers. Hmm. That kind of stuff too. Like I could. I was a big Laffy Taffy fan. Yeah, I never had braces. People with braces couldn't do Laffy. Couldn't do Laffy Taffy. Right, right, right. Yeah, but hmm. important this is stuff. Really gone down the rabbit hole. We're not talking football at all. Let's turn right. this around and talk some football here. By week day after Halloween, what are you going to do, man? What's on the top of my mind? You know that. <laughs> um, so Matt, uh, when, when we we start to uh, get into this, basically what. Essentially, is the second half of the season. Though. Yeah, yeah. Especially with the Steelers being in a bye week situation. Yeah. Too. Um, are there is there something you're looking for more out of this Steeler team that you want to see? Like this has been okay, but I want to see more of this. Yeah. One of my concerns slash interests is something we've talked about a lot: interior run defense. And this last game, I thought was a bad example of that. A lot of it, as you've noted many times, is out of nickel. But if you just think about the human beings in the box, it doesn't matter what team you're playing. There's going to be five offensive linemen, all of whom are 300-plus pounds. Yes. And probably a tight end and the ball carrier, you know, three wide. And if you're six in the box, while most of these guys are really good players, just in terms of tonnage, are Watt, Highsmith, Hayward, Ogunjobi, Wilson and Queen. You're, you're outmanned. You you're know what I mean? Up, you're giving up about 
A lot of beef. With a five man offensive line or a tight end in there as well, you're 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 down a good two or three hundred pounds. Right. I mean just a that. full body. Of course. And now TJ Watts better than the dude blocking him, and Highsmith probably is too, and those guys set the edge. But just in terms of beef in the box, their six versus our six and plus a ball carrier. I mean, these aren't new problems. I no, mean, this, is, this is the line this is, that you have to walk right. when you when this you play the league. a three four defense, and your and your defensive ends in that nickel defense are two hundred are two hundred fifty pound right I mean, outside they're linebackers. Not, they're not Hutchinson or Miles Garrett yeah. or somebody like that. I mean, a front four that other nickel packages are probably heavier, but it doesn't mean you want to keep a nose on there. But I wouldn't mind Benton replacing Ogan Joby maybe. And I think there's some credence to, if you're getting gashed, should Roberts be one of those two linebackers? Well, and that, that but was then there rephrase is yeah. another problem, you know. But I, I think you can. I don't want to retard the progress of, of Peyton Wilson. Right, right, right. And that's he's the good. Yeah, he's good, and and mm-hmm. and, you know, and all those guys are good. He's really. going to continue right. getting better. But to your point, if Roberts is out there, they're probably not run up the gut on you. They're going to start throwing. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, for Wilson and Queen's best attributes are not taking on guard. Right. And you have a real hard time for— There are very few for... inside linebackers in the league. In who, today's oh, NFL, he's really— right. Like, right. That's what always kills me when we're talking about linebacker prospects in the draft. He really has trouble getting off blocks from offensive linemen. No, you don't say. Right. He has trouble— The 230-pound guy has trouble getting off the block of a 300-pounder. Right. Shocking. And to Roberts— if this was 1985, oh, he'd be I'd say he's guy. a pro bowler. Yeah. I mean, he truly would be a pro bowler. That's what was asked of that position. Smash a fullback in the hole and yeah. make a play. You know, come downhill. Go hit somebody really hard. Yeah, yeah. And if it's a guard, he can do that. You know, I mean, he can hang with those guys. In today's NFL, if, you come out, if you're running a 4'8", you don't even get drafted. Yeah. So you need to be leaner. you got to be built like Queen or Wilson. And, it could, and still, that's better than getting – I'd rather get run on for four or five yards of play than no, we can't defend anyone in the middle of the field either. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. nothing's perfect. It's the line here. that you right. have to walk, and and you hope for a holding penalty and yeah. incompletion, whatever it may be. Um, I, I, I look think they at, need more from Benton and Ogan Joby, even in base. Yeah, in the run game and holding, not getting moved. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because hey, you know Hayward's getting doubled he's, in those situations, and he's fine. And yeah. he's great. And, that, that's but when he's getting doubled in those situations, the other guys have to win. And he also can't play every snap. Yeah. You don't want him playing every snap. I'm not saying they're one D lineman away, but you and I have kicked around the idea of if you had a Vita Vea, I mean, obviously. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm talking about like something like that. And then Benton and Ogan Joby and Cam are now rotating as my DNs. You're complete. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think that their front to me, or their D-line is still the best in the league. I believe that to be true. But if you had a big-bodied A-gap player, it would be someone who, complete. Someone who eats up those double-team blocks, and yeah. therefore now Cam Hayward can't be double-teamed. Right. I mean, Keanu like, Benton can't be double Of course, you'd be Dexter Lawrence or Vea or yeah. somebody like that. You'd love but to have that guy. Of yeah. course. But, I mean, even the 50% of that guy. Even Montrevis Adams, I think, would have a role, you know? Yeah. So... I think that's something to think about. I guarantee I you that's something that the you. coaching staff is thinking about now. Now, this Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Right. You know, how do we how do we fix this? And the only ones I can come up with are does Adams come back soon? And not that he'd play a ton, but at least he'd rotate in and he's nose ish. Should Benton be more of an end? Should Roberts be more in the nickel? Or is that situational? Yeah. Or when we play the Ravens, is Roberts never leave the field? You know what I mean? I don't and know. There'll be some of that, and and yeah, you could also go, you know, maybe a three safety, nickel things of that nature. That yeah, make you bigger because Beanie's out there. Yeah, and you have to factor in the nickel in the run game now too. Absolutely, the nickel ha- plays an integral part. Integral part, and all the good offensive coaches are attacking the nickel in the run game, making him tackle. I think Sutton upgrades that, but to your point, big nickel would definitely upgrade that. Yeah. You know, if, if you put him close to the line of scrimmage, maybe everyone can bump in a little bit tighter too. Makes it harder to move them. So, yeah. I mean, that's 
not the biggest concern in the world. I mean, it's not like can't block a soul. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's I mean, big, it, worse things they, you can they have. They did in the two games before the game against the Giants, they gave up 57 and 54 yards rushing. Mm-hmm. So it's not like it's, oh, you know, yeah, this is happening every week. This isn't a dam broken, it's a flood, and it's incorrectable yeah. and will never be, you know. We're talking about Cam Hayward and Watt and Highsmith and, <laughs> you know, your best players, yeah. you know, is the area of concern. But you know you're going to see it. Yeah. I mean, you Teams know you're going to try that. It. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, really, that's what Dallas did against them. Yeah. Absolutely. Well. Yeah. You know, Giants had success as well. You know. So maybe it's an NFC thing. <laughs> maybe. We and, got and those teams, you and know, Washington's you, up next. If you look at it, those teams are kind of built. They're built to play each other. Sure. So there are, are similarities with how they're constructed. In terms uh, not of to mention, stuff. too, if you're game planning all week as the Giants staff. Well, let's watch that Cowboy yeah. game. I know how they think. You yeah, know, right. I mean, they would never do this. Wow, they actually tried that against the Steelers. They never try that. You right. Know? There, there's you definitely just know them better. There. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Think so. through their eyes. Anyways, let's get to another break. That's uh, He is More Matt. candy bar talk coming your way. There you go. <laughs> I was trying to point at the camera like I was being dramatic. Oh, I thought you were pointing at Tyler. Uh, <laughs> he is Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. When we come back, Matt, we got to pick our fantasy football lineup, our DFS lineup for we, the week. We won last week, right? We, we won last week. Let's see if we can make together. it two in a row. We'll do that right after this. And we are back. I'm Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And it is time, Matt, here All on right, the drive let's go. to put together a winning Only two DFS teams on by. A lot to pick from. Plenty to pick from. Let's put this sucker together here. And, and do our traditional pick from winner. defenses. I'm just looking through this. Somebody said something the other day. Like, you guys really need to go through all the defenses. Okay. We don't, I mean, but I like to bring them care. up to you in case this, to find yeah. out what you like because we haven't talked about this stuff, folks. We don't talk about anything that we're going to do on the air until we get on the air. Right. So this week's interesting, though, because we remember we had this conversation a couple days ago that the winning percentage of a lot of the good teams of their the, in the games they won, I forget what they call that. I should know that off the top of my head, but it's like 20%, 30%, yeah. you know, win, win percentage share or whatever because a lot of the crap teams haven't played the crap teams. This well, week? now, yeah, yeah. I say now that's coming back. So maybe like the Panther defense is so cheap it's worth it. Although Derek Carr's playing, I do not play. Yeah, the they're playing defense. New Orleans, which right. would have been because New Orleans is 29th in points allowed. Yeah, to opposing defenses. So you'd look at that and go, "Ooh, that's not bad." But you can't start the Panthers defense. No, even saying, at 2,400 dollars. If it was Rattler, though, I'd consider. It oh if yeah, that was so much cheaper than all the others. Yeah. It's, my, it's kind of my point. Well, it's just like the Colts. The Colts against Minnesota. If it was Anthony Richardson, I'm starting the Vikings all day long. I don't care what they cost. Yes. Because he's going to throw the ball all over the yard and nobody yeah, yeah, knows yeah, where yeah, it's yeah. going. Right. But but even like Titans Patriots, if those guys are super cheap, I'm interested because I think the much sure either team gets to 20. So some some defenses I am interested in. The Patriots are 3,000. Okay. Tennessee is 32nd in terms of points allowed. Um. I like the Eagles against Jacksonville at 3,100. I do, too. Just lost your left tackle. You got a lot of injuries. Okay. Uh, I still like the Chargers against Cleveland at 3,300. I do, too. I like both of those. I think that's going to be a very low-scoring game. Yeah. I don't know who's cheaper than the other. but I like the Titans' defense against New England. Yes. They are 3,200. I was about to ask, what's the? you said the Patriots are 3,000. Yeah. What's the difference? Only two hundred. I would rather have the Titans than the. Yeah, the they're Panthers. at home. May's not playing. Their defense is better. It's just better. They're at home. Yeah. Um, Baltimore against Denver is thirty five hundred. I don't think Denver can exploit their weakness. I don't think they can either. Yeah. That's why I kind of like that. Yeah, one. I, I hear you. But those are the more expensive. Like the Saints are the number one defense in the league this week. Ugh. They stink. It's just with Panther thing. Yeah, Bengals. Wow. Bengals are two against the against Vegas, and they stink. I, don't want to I spend, wouldn't play the Bengals. I don't want to spend thirty seven hundred dollars on the Bengals defense. Are you no. kidding me? Who are the super cheapies? Well, now you're looking at Jaguars against the Eagles, uh, Giants against Washington, the Panthers, the Raiders, the Buccaneers. Yeah. I could make a case to start the Raiders. Right. No Orlando Brown. No Orlando no Brown. Higgins. Max Crosby's going to get some sacks. Yeah, yeah. But and their defense isn't horrendous. No, but I don't. I can't pull the trigger on that. I think the Titans is my favorite one. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and 
there really is, aren't many cheap options here that you no. just look at and say, okay. Was it Monday we went through maybe, them too? And I, I can't even start the Vikings necessarily this week against Flacco because the Vikings are going to blitz like crazy. Oh, yeah. But Flacco's going to recognize the blitz and get the ball out. He will. He will. Yeah. I don't know if they'll have a lot of success against the Vikes, but he won't get put in a blender. No, no. So Titans? Yeah. All right. Titans, they're one of the cheaper ones, they're right? They're 3200 I mean, they're not one of the more expensive ones. Uh-huh. They're kind of in the middle of the, of the, the pack. Uh, let's go to tight end next. Since okay. Then we, uh, that may lead us where we want to go at quarterback. Kelsey, 6300 Brock Bowers is 6000 Trey McBride, 5800 Njoku is 5500 Evan Ingram, 5300 Hawkinson, who is back this week, is 5200 against Can't Indiana. do it yet, though. Yeah. Uh, Jake Ferguson, 5100 I don't mind that. Okay. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, 5000 if you think Dallas is going to lose that game, like I have, I have Kyle Pitts and Ferguson now that I traded yeah. Brock Bowers. I think Atlanta wins big. So the way I looked at that game was this, and both are both defenses are not great against tight ends. Okay, I didn't know that, but okay. That's so I looked at I looked at it and I said, which team do I think isn't going to win the game? I'm going to pick Atlanta in that game. It's one of my favorite bets of the week, actually, is Atlanta minus. So three. I want I Ferguson in that, that game because I think they're going to have – they have to throw. They can't run the football. Right. right they got right. to throw the football. I'm cool with that logic. Um, um, the expensive ones, before we get too far, far, though, I think Bowers could have a monster game. He could. Yeah. Uh, so Ferguson's 5,100. Dalton Kincaid, 5,000. Kyle Pitts is 4,900. Hmm. I think Pitts is better than – I do, too. Than, I think yeah. in a in – a, in a, I, I get your logic, yeah. but I think I would rather – Pay for Pitts and Ferguson. Ferguson may Ferguson will end up with more catches. Yeah. Pitts might have more yards. After the catch, big yeah. plays, downfield, all those things. Yes, I agree. Sam Laporta, 4,800. Hmm. No da- Jamison Williams. No Jamison Williams. I can't go there, though. He's been so He's bad, though. Yeah. Uh, Dallas Goddard is 4,700. Tucker, Cra- Tucker Craft, 4,600. Cade Otten, $4,500. Kansas City is 32nd against really? opposing tight ends. Wow. I think the Bucs keep that game close. Too. So one thing that they don't do well is is, is I would never thought that ends. about Kansas City. Now, maybe they put a corner on him because he's such a big part of the— They do weird stuff with McDuffie. But I still like Kate Otten. I still like a tight end against a cornerback. I don't care who yeah, the cornerback yeah, yeah. is. To me, that's by far the best one so far. Yeah, I don't even think I'm we need to go in. $4,500? Right. Are you kidding me? Right. He's their number one target. Yeah. On a not a bad offense. I think he'll be kind of again. One, he was chalky last week. I think he'll be chalky again this week. They didn't adjust. I'm shocked that he didn't. I don't know what he cost last week, but I he should be five tight ends higher than that. He was a little bit cheaper than that, but yeah, uh, plug that in. Yeah, no, I'm in on that. Okay, quarterback. So yeah. we've we've gone pretty cheap here. Mm-hmm. Lamar eight thousand. I don't love him against Denver. Plus, no. he's been on the injury report all no, week. No, right, right. He may not play the last quarter or something. Jalen Hurts is seventy eight hundred. He's been putting his best games up lately, but I don't know that I'm excited about paying for a big, big quarterback. Josh Allen seventy seven hundred. Jaden Daniels seventy five hundred. Jordan Love seven thousand. His injury scares me. Joe Burrow sixty nine hundred. Huh. Wish that nah, no Higgins. Yeah. yeah. Patrick Mahomes sixty seven hundred. They are thirty second against opposing quarterbacks. I like that it's on like Monday Night Football too, and people are talking about you know Mahomes doesn't have a good year. Yeah, that's the that's when he throws five touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. Kyler Murray is sixty six hundred. Jared Goff sixty five hundred. Baker Mayfield sixty five hundred. Kirk Cousins sixty four hundred. I don't He's hate got that. weapons against a bad D. Yeah, this doesn't run. Dak Prescott's on the other side of that 6,300. I like both I of those guys. I think that's, that's going to be a track meet. I agree. I think Atlanta's going to score a lot of points. Yeah. Would like to get some of that offense. You can convince me on Cousins. Let's keep going a little bit, but let's definitely keep Cousins in our back pocket. Tua is 6,200. Okay. Caleb Williams, 6,100. Sam Darnold, 6,000. Bo Nix, 5,900. He's a sneaky Fantasy contributor because of the it, wheels. He'll yeah. run, yeah. and Baltimore's pass defense is not good. Right. Even though we don't think they can exploit that, like go win the game probably. Yeah. They'll probably make a big play or two. Yeah. I think uh, I still prefer Cousins. Geno Smith, 5,800. Joe Flacco, 5,700. He could throw for 300 yards. 
Matthew Stafford, 5,700 against Seattle. Where are they against quarterbacks? I bet it's not great. 16th, middle of the pack. I'm interested. Now, Puka Nakua is questionable. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Uh, Der- David Carr, Derek Carr, I'm sorry, uh, 5,600. Yeah, he's back. He's off the – Against Carolina. I know. That's not bad. Trevor Lawrence. I'll be very interested in Olave. 56. That's right. That might not be a bad stack. Mm-hmm. Carr and Olave because they don't have anybody else to throw I to. I'd say that's the only show in town. He's going to get 10 plus targets. Trevor Lawrence is 5,600. Uh, Jameis Winston, 5,400 against the Chargers. I'm just not expecting a lot of points. In no, I don't either. Justin Herbert against the Browns is 5,300. I don't expect a lot of points, but that's awful cheap for him. Yeah. Daniel Jones against Washington is 5,200. He didn't put any rushing production up against Pittsburgh, but he does. He usually does. Yeah. Uh, Jacoby Brissett against the uh, Titans is 5,000. That's about it. Yeah. Carr and Cousins are the two I like best, especially if we're going to if we're going to stack with Olave. Do you just want to do that? Just put it in and Let's see. Let's put how it in because I think Olave Olave is going to be pretty cheap. He's not going to be like a top ten guy, I wouldn't think. Yeah, and. I mean, they're still going to throw the ball to the backs. That's what they do. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. they just don't run the ball particularly effectively. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, me, so we put Carr and Olave in. Let me find Olave here while yeah. we're on that subject. So C.D. Lamb is 8,800. Justin Jefferson, 8,700. Jamar Chase, 8,600. Uh, A.J. Brown, 8,100. They're 29th against opposing one. No, so A.J. Brown's appealing. He's been a monster. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, 7,900. Cooper Cup, 7,700. Malik Neighbors, 7,500. Tyreek Hill, 7,300. Puka Nakua, 7,200. Mike Evans is out. Terry McLaurin, 7,100. Zay Flowers, 7,000. Marvin Harrison, 6,900. Devonta Smith, 6,800. Drake London, 6,700. We didn't get any of that Falcons passing attack. We did not. Brian Thomas, 6,600. Yeah, he's a game-time decision. DJ Moore, 6,500. DK Metcalf, 6,500. T. Higgins, out, out 6,400. Or doubtful, actually. Mm, yeah. Jaden Reed is 6,400. Deontay Johnson is 6,300. That is way too much. Yeah. Xavier Worthy, 6,300. Jackson Smith and Jigba, 6,200. There's Chris Olave at 6,100. Oh, crap. He should have been listed long ago. That, that's even under budget for us. Yeah, wow. Okay. Um, Darnell Mooney, 6,000. What do you think about A.J. Brown? How about Josh Downs at 6,000? Oh, yeah. Plug Pittman's it. banged up. Plug it in. Flacco is gold. They're going to blitz, and he's going to be boom, 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 he boom. He won't boom, get Gilmore. Boom, boom. Yeah. yeah, right, right. Uh, that's great. Um, yeah, that's that's a gimme. What about A.J. Brown? That's going to mean we're going to have to probably go cheap at one of the running backs, at least yeah. one of them. I don't have a problem with it. I'll, I'll put well, him. I mean, of the big dogs, he was... He stood out to me. I'll put him in there. Uh, that leaves us 5,500, an average of 5,500 for two running backs and a flex. It's a little light. It's a little light. Uh, Derrick Henry, 8,300. Saquon, 8,200. Kyron Williams, 8,000. Alvin Kamara, 7,800. I'm interested. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, 7,700. Jameer Gibbs, 7,600. Brian Robinson, 7,400. Or Bijan, it's Bijan, 7,400. Mm. Too many B. Robinsons. Yeah, yeah, we do that a lot. Kenneth Walker, 7,300. James Cook, 7,200. J.K. Dobbins, 7,000. Josh Jacobs, 6,900. Tony Pollard, 6,800. Devin Achan, 6,700. I like that. Um, Aaron Jones, 6,600. I like that. James Conner, 6,600. I like that, too. David Montgomery, 6,500. I like that. that neighborhood to me. All four of those are really interesting. Chuba Hubbard, sixty five hundred. Is Brooks going to play? He's not going to play. Okay, we know that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Kind of working against ourselves there by starting a running back. Against, yeah, but they're not good against the run. No, they're not. Um, Kareem Hunt is sixty four hundred. De- uh, DeAndre Swift is sixty four hundred. Brian Robinson is sixty three hundred. Ramondre Stevenson sixty three hundred. Javante Williams sixty two hundred. What do you think of Brian Robinson? The Giants run defense. It's questionable, isn't though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mostert but is sixty is six thousand. Is, is Eckler a cheapy? I mean, you haven't mentioned him yet. He's gonna be. A I haven't mentioned him yeah. yet. Dowdell is six thousand. ATN is fifty nine hundred. 
Chase Brown, 5,900. Like Nick Chubb, 5,800. Rashad White, 5,800. Uh, Alexander Madison against the Bengals is 5,700. He's the guy now. Yeah. Uh, Bucky Irving, 5,700. Zach Moss, 5,600. He's questionable. Tyrone Tracy against Washington is 5,500. I'm absolutely cool with that. Yeah. Has he been cleared? There was news on him today. Yeah, that I don't know. Zach Charbonnet is 5,400. Ekelar is 5,300. Kind of like that. Kamani Vidal, 5,300. Justice Hill, 5,200. Ray Davis, 5,200. Now we're getting into uh, backups of backups. Yeah. Although Tyler Algier is 4,900. Well, don't we only have like 5,500 to spend? Per we have 50, an average of 5,500 each. Yeah. There's no clear, like, oh, we can start this guy this week. Right. Because the guys that are, I didn't like anybody really under budget. Yeah. We might have to punt on AJ Brown. Yeah. I'm not loving. I mean, I, I, I we have some, some of those guys in that 5,500 range. Like Chase Brown at 50, 5,900. Okay. Yeah. I'd like that one. We can afford that. There was four right around a Chan that I liked that were. They're too expensive for I'd us. Say, but we might have to get out AJ Brown. To, They're way too expensive. I, I like AJ. I like having AJ Brown in there though. I know. I think he could go off this week. Um, How about Algier? It's he was either, he was below budget. It's either that or we go Tyrone Tracy and hope that he plays. And if he doesn't, then we pivot maybe to Algier. I like Tracy more than Algier. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I think he's playing. I thought I saw good news on Tracy. Definitely was encouraging news yesterday. It's either that or or you go Alexander Madison is fifty seven hundred with Chase Brown the same game. I don't think that don't, matters. Yeah, I don't care about that so much. But I'll, if Tracy, Tracy's my favorite, if Tracy plays, Tracy's. I mean, again, that's right on budget for us. That gives us them fifty one hundred to spend on a flex. Okay, which puts us in Jerry Judy, Jake Ferguson, Jalen Tolbert. Uh, Antonio Gibson, DeAndre Hopkins. I like DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre actually. Hopkins. Second game? Second game in. Monday Night Football, showcase him a little bit. Do we need to look yeah. anywhere else? There we go. DeAndre Hopkins. That's still, that gives us $100 left over. So if Tracy doesn't play, I get some pivots there. That yeah, we can... okay. All right, where did we spend all our money besides A.J. Brown? Seemed like we were short at the end there. Well, we didn't go as cheap on defense as we usually do. We didn't go as cheap at quarterback as we usually we usually. Well, we're kind of. I mean, it was not. We don't usually guy. have an AJ Brown type. In, we don't have an know, eight thousand dollar player a, in our lineup. Okay, usually. okay, that's what's throwing me off then. But if I you're going to put an eight thousand dollar player in your lineup, he better hit. He better hit. He's been phenomenal. <clears throat> it better not be five tush pushes this week. Well, there'll probably be a couple, <laughs> <laughs> but he might get them there. Yeah. Uh, so that's Derek Carr at 5,600, Chase Brown at 5,900, Tyrone Tracy at 5,500, Chris Olave at 6,100 to, to uh, stack with Derek Carr, mm-hmm. Josh Downs at 6,000, mm-hmm. A.J. Brown at 8,100, Kate Otten at 4,500, DeAndre Hopkins at 5,000, and the Titans' defense at 3,200. We're light at running back, but those guys are going to— They're going to get they're points. Gonna, they both catch balls, too. Yeah. I and mean, that's the key to me. Is yeah. They could be out there on third downs. They could be down there if they're losing. Chase Brown heavy. against the, the Raiders? I know. I'm starting him in our league. I, I might bench, him, bench Waddle for him. I'm going to start— If Tracy's good to go, he's going to be my flex this week. Yeah, yeah. I'll start him over Marvin Harrison. Wow. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I get you. I mean, he's going to catch the ball, and yeah, yeah. he's running against Washington. I know. Like I like him a lot. He's going to get 20 touches. Probably, probably. He probably gets five targets, you know? Yeah. That's fair. Better chance to score a touchdown, you know. I, I haven't decided. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, but that's Harrison's pretty strong. Yeah. But I'm going to enter that. We're okay. locked in. Boom. Locked and loaded. Two in a row. Go for it. That's two in a row. Again, that is uh, Derek Carr, quarterback, Chase Brown, Tra- Tyrone Tracy at running back. A.J. Brown, Josh Downs, Chris Olave at the wide receiver position, Kate Otten at tight end, DeAndre Hopkins in the flex, and the Titans defense against New England. Some good matchups. Yeah, absolutely. We need Olave catch touchdown. That would be good. We'll go a long or way. Or have, a, you know, seven, eight catches. Yeah, yeah. And if he's productive, then we'll be in it. And he should be against that particular team. That's what I mean. They're so bad. Yeah. He is Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. You're listening to The Drive here on the Steelers Audio Network. 
Matt and I will be back to take a look at all this week's games right after this. You can join former members of the Black and Gold for Kids Flag Football Clinics at North Strabane Park on Saturday, November 9th. Instructors include Mike Logan and Roosevelt Nix, plus Kayla Pierce from the Pittsburgh Passion. Registration for your school-aged child is free. Go to the calendar page at dve.com to sign up today. Kids Flag Football Clinics are brought to you by U.S. Steel, s and Bank, Millie's Truck Pittsburgh, and South Hills Auto. I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson, and we'll take a look now at all this week's games. All right. Um, of course, the Steelers and 49ers off this week, so yep, yep. We have can't worry pretty, about those two teams. Slate. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, the first game on the slate here is one we've talked about quite a bit. The 3-4 and four Cowboys at the 5-3 and three Falcons. Uh, Atlanta favored by three, the over under 51 and a half. Yeah, I, I definitely could see points. You know, again, we, we had a lot of fantasy consideration. We're kind of for both sides. Um, in Atlanta, though, with the state of the Cowboys, no Parsons, I'll gladly lay the three. That's, yeah. that's actually one of my favorite bets of the week. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot. I like the over under, too. Over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't shock me. Um, I mean, Dallas almost always puts up points. Yeah, I like the Cowboys as well. Or, sorry, the Falcons as well. Yeah. Um, at two and five, the Dolphins are at the six and two Bills. And if the Dolphins lose this one, I know it's over. It's over. They're getting Buffalo's what? favored by six. The over under is 48 and a half. I think they keep it close and lose. But my concern is, is Buffalo has finally realized the city they live in. And they lead the league by a wide margin in six offensive line. They'll come out with six O linemen and two tight ends. Ray Davis, two hundred fifty pound quarterback, and Miami soft. You yeah. know, like I, I could see them just bullying them, but that doesn't mean you win by ten. You know, what I mean, yeah. with that style. Um, Marty you, Cooper sounds like he's questionable. Yeah, but I do think that Miami will put points up, and and you can run against the Bills. But I don't know if you can run against the Bills with a little tiny running back. Yeah. No, I think two is going to throw a lot. Yeah. But I think they'll keep it close in a desperate game for them. I'll yeah. take the points, but I think they lose. I like the Bills. I think I like the Bills. I'll, I'll, I'll lay the six. I was actually a little shocked it wasn't seven plus. Tyreek's a little banged up, too. Right. You know, I just, yeah. Uh, the Raiders at two and six are at the three and five Bengals. Cincinnati favored by seven, the over under 46 and a half. I think since he wins. Seven's a lot, though. I know. Should they be favored by seven over anyone without Higgins and Bad D? What version of Minshew do you get? Does Crosby wreak havoc? I think I'll take the points. I think I'll take the points, too. I think Cincinnati yeah. wins, but seven's, yeah. seven's too much. Seven's a lot. That's I mean, like 23-20, 27-24, something yeah. along those lines. I mean, the Raiders are bad, but since he's not good. No. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I'd pick on Cam Taylor Britt as much as you want. Mm-hmm. The whole defense is susceptible. The Chargers at four and three are at the Browns at two and six. The Chargers favored by a point and a half. The over under forty two and a half. I think it's gonna be really low scoring. Two good defenses, a lot of running. I'll take Herbert. Yeah, I, I, will I think too. they end up winning. Yeah, uh, Cleveland could win this game. They could, um, but. I don't see it. I, I just think that the I think it's the Chargers, really close. Yeah. I think it's 14-13, 17-16, something like that. And in that. that instance, I'll trust the better coach. Yeah, which we think is Harbaugh. Yeah. Yeah, and quarterback. Yeah. Uh, at 2-6, and six, the Patriots are at the 1-6 and six Titans. Blech. Tennessee favored by 3.5, the over-under just 37. And a half. I just take points. More than a field goal game. I know it's in Tennessee, and they have better players, but I think it's a yucky game. I'll take points. I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't touch it either, but I, I like the Titans. Do you? Yeah. Patriots just won. They're not going <laughs> to win again. They can't do it twice They're going to win yeah. two games in a row. Yeah. I don't know. I just will take points. I don't think either one's good at all. No, I don't think so either. The 6-2 and two Commanders are at the 2-6 and six Giants. Washington favored by four, the over-under 44 and a half. This might be my upset special. Really? I think I, I like say, Washington. What's that? I think, I think, I'm sorry. I think I like the Giants in this one. 
I hear you. They did some good things. They have some good players. I think they'll hit Daniels and with his ribs. How they should feel? have beaten Washington in Washington earlier this season yeah, if they point. had a kicker. Good point. At home, getting over a touch or over a field goal. You're, you're not picking the Giants to win. No, I'm picking them to win. Oh, outright. okay. You think they win the game? Yeah. I don't think they're like a bottom tier team. I don't think so either. I think there's there's some talent there. Yeah, there's stuff. Like I don't know how Washington covers neighbors. Right. And those two will get the ball a lot. We think Tracy's going to have a good game. Yeah. I, I do want the points. I think the Giants are figuring a few things out. Mm-hmm. Contrary to popular belief, Jones doesn't stink. Yeah. I mean, he might not be the answer, but he doesn't stink. He struggles at home, I will say that. but He struggles a lot of places. No. But, but yeah. Uh, at 2-6, and six, the Saints are at the 1-7 and seven Panthers. Is, there's so many like bad teams playing bad teams. I know. All the teams. bad teams are playing bad teams. The Saints are favored by seven. I know. The over under 43 and a half. If Andy I Dalton was starting, the, I know. Yeah. I can't pick the Panthers. If Andy Dalton was starting, I, I, would, I would take those points. Right. But I can't when, as currently constructed. Derek Carr could be rusty and it won't matter. It won't matter. Let's dump it to Kamara a hundred yeah. times. I don't know if they win by seven or not. I wouldn't touch it, but I couldn't sleep with myself if I picked the Panthers. <laughs> <laughs> the five and three Broncos are at the five and three Ravens. Baltimore favored by nine and a half. Yeah. The over under forty six and a half. I think this game is like tied at the half and as tight as can be. And then Henry and Lamar start running like crazy. I don't love Lamar's injury situation. No, I don't either. Playing. Does he not run as much this week? Because they, again, they got to come back and play on Thursday then. Yeah. I'll take, I'll lay the points. Nine and a half is a That's lot. That's a lot, though. I just thought they got embarrassed last week. I don't think Denver can take advantage of the pass defense. It's like the right number, though. I'll take the nine and a half points. I think it's totally be, get it. This could be like 27 20, something like that. I mean, I definitely think Peyton will keep it close for much of the game. They'll come up with know? some kind of trick play that'll score. They're and, good at both lines of scrimmage. Yeah. Certain probably is on Zay. Yeah. I, I just, I, you give me you nine can convince me. It's you a give lot. me nine and a half points in an NFL game. I'm probably going to take them most of the they time. They have a winning record. They're not. Right. They're, they're not, not the Panthers. Not terrible. They're not great, but they're not terrible. They're probably the 16th best team in the league. Yeah. The two and six Jaguars are at the five and two Eagles. Philadelphia favored by seven and a half. The over under 45 and a half. This smells like a get fired on Monday game. Yeah. Lose by 40 in a brutal situation to the team he used to coach. And, yeah. Yeah. All AJ Brown stuff. catches four touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be good. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think the Eagles just blow them out. I do too. Jaguars just got rid of their left tackle. That's always a good. Right, thing. I mean, it's just a bad sign. Yeah, like, eh, we're not going to protect our quarterback anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that we just gave. Wonder if they ask to... hey, Trevor Lawrence, "Hey, you mind if we trade him?" Right, get him out of here. We're going to put Walker Little in instead. Yeah. You know. The four and three Bears are at the four and four Cardinals. Arizona favored by a point and a half. The over under forty four and a half. I think these are pretty equal teams. I don't think it's a hard place to play. Bears D is quite good. Cardinals isn't. So I'll take the points. Yeah. I, I don't even know that I want to watch that game. <laughs> uh, I'll take the home team. It's only a point and a half. Yeah. They're at home. That's t- I mean, Chicago was in Washington last week. Now they got to go to Phoenix. Mm. A lot of travel. Yeah. Okay. At six I don't and, have any great angles on that one either. Yeah. At six and one, the Lions are at the six and two Packers. Detroit favored by three and a half. The over under is forty eight and a half. It's three and a half. I saw it at two and a half this morning. It's three and a half here. So Ooh, that might be the difference. I was gonna I took the Lions at two and a half. So I do think they'll run. And I think their line travels. The love injury's big. I don't love yeah. I think that he might not finish the game. Three and a half is a lot for home good team. Yeah. Jacobs is banged up, too. I mean, I, I just think the Lions have more going for them right now. They're better. Yeah. and they're, I they're, took them at two and a half. I'll, I'll stay. I'll stay, take them at three and a half. Yeah, I'll take the Lions. At three and four, the Rams are at the four and four Seahawks. If the Rams win this game, they have the same record as the Seahawks, who mm-hmm. were red hot at one point. The Rams favored by a point and a half in Seattle – the over under 48 and a half. I'm taking the Rams. Looks like P- Puka Nakua might be a game time decision. Yeah, game. yeah. I'm not sure what Metcalf's story is either. I think he's going to play. It's looking good. I really have a hard time with their offensive line, though. 
Seattle's. And I think that's the one thing the Rams D does well. Those young guys rush the passer and are strong at the point of attack. I, I like Stafford with his probably full group of weapons. He's playing better than Smith. Yeah, he yeah. is. It's a road trip they make a lot. Kyron Williams can run the ball against them yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I, I like the Rams as well. Coaching advantage to, San, to L.A. I almost call them St. Louis. The eight twenty game. The 4-4 four and four Colts are at the 5-2 and two Vikings. Minnesota favored by 5, the over-under 46.5. Don't feel super strong about it because I do think Minnesota could be crashing back to earth a little bit. But that, that place on a night game. It's a tough <laughs> – yeah. Oh. Now – I think Flacco does give them a chance to yes. at least cover in this game. I mean, if it was Richardson, I'd definitely take the, the yeah. Vikings. And if it but was it seven also and might half, be seven or seven and a half. Say, even if it's that, at that number, I would take the Vikes. But they're going to blitz him. They're going to they're gonna get after he, Flacco. They're going to hit him. Yeah. And he's, old men getting hit isn't great. They don't like it. No. Rodgers, you know. I'll take the Vikes. I like the Vikings, too, but mm-hmm. five, that's a that's good a number. That's a pretty good number, That's yeah. a good number. Yeah. The Monday night game. The four and four Buccaneers are at the seven and O Chiefs. Kansas City favored by eight and a half. The over under forty five and a half. I want the points. I want the points. Chiefs don't the beat Chiefs, people they by don't nine. Blow anybody out. Right, right. They may win the game. I think they'll win the game. Bucks can run. You know, I mean, they have a good line. They they can travel. Baker's playing well. I know they don't have Evans and Godwin. That's probably why the numbers not. That's why it is under, what it under is. A touchdown. Yeah. You know. But Kansas they, City doesn't blow teams out. Yeah. And people still bet them like they do. On their record and yeah. their Super Bowl champions, but not the, the spreads aren't usually right. I'm sure they're bad against the spread over the last awful. four years. Awful. Yeah. Not awful, but they yeah. – for, I mean, for as many games as they win. Well, here, I mean, Mahomes is 22-28 and 28 against the spread in his career when laying at least uh, seven points – Right. At home. Because people think they're better than they are. They're really good. They're just not. Well, that's just anywhere. 22 and 28 anywhere when landing at least seven points. They're 0-2 in such situations this year, including last week against the Raiders. Yeah. Okay. Raiders came in the back door on them. Bucks are good. I mean, Bucks will score points. They'll score points. I don't think they get their doors blown off. I'll definitely take the points. Yeah, I will too. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a closer game than a lot of people think. And if, if Baker Mayfield has one of those games – where he's just – he's certainly capable of playing out of his mind. In a good way, you mean? In a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could win that game. They could win that game. That could be down to the last field goal type thing or we're all on the edge of our seats at the end of Monday night late. You know, that that wouldn't shock me. Yeah, because I don't think – I don't think Kansas City will run the ball super effectively against – I don't either. Tampa Bay. I don't either. They might throw the ball all right. And, sure. You know, maybe Mahomes, you know, gets, gets hot and does whatever, but – Mahomes could have a monster day. He could, but he hasn't this year. Right. That's the thing. And eight and a half's a lot. That's a lot of points. I mean, for an NFL average game. team. You yeah. Know? yeah. That's this week's games. Okay. Some good ones. There's a lot of bad ones. Yeah, it's not a great slate, but something will surprise us. Yeah. It usually does. I mean, well, it'll be definitely. Some if we fun knew stuff. exactly what was going to happen, we wouldn't be doing this right now. <laughs> so, you know, what do I know? Jobs be a little easier, too. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, let's get to a break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little Steelers in the second half here, Matt. Okie doke. And uh, maybe get out the crystal ball with the Steelers. I like it. We'll do that when we return. He is Matt Williamson. I am Dale Lally. I'm going to pick him and win this week. There you go. And this is The Drive (laughs) on the Steelers Audio Network. And we are back. I am Dale Lally. He is the Matt Williamson. And, well, let's, uh, let's take a look here at the Steelers' remaining schedule, Matt, and kind of extrapolate this thing a little bit here because there's some there's some pitfalls here. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not easy. Uh, I get it. We knew that going into the season, but it's not as daunting as it looked before the season began. It looked like murder's row. Yeah. I mean, when you thought the Browns would be the Steelers' equal, you know, that's two games right there. But Washington looked like, ah, chalk that right, one up. Yeah, you know, so right, it's you know. some give and take. Yeah. You know, it, playing the Eagles a month ago isn't the same as playing the Eagles a month no. from now. And even the Browns are a lot different. And that could all right. change, you know, between now and then. The Bengals are one of the most volatile ones on the schedule still. Like, I think they could either go get hot or... It could all just fall apart. It all is a mess and Higgins can't wait to get out and it's not our year, blah, you know. That's all the whole thing with them. And we talked about this ad nauseum over the summer. Like, Higgins and Hendrickson... 
if you treat them that way, you might get this. They you both know? want it out, and yeah. all of a sudden, you know. We're not open for business. The Bengals, We're not having how about the Bengals have 12 sacks this year. Really? As a team. Hendrickson has seven of them. Yeah, and they have a good The rest pass of the rusher, team right. has five. Where, where would they be without those? <laughs> and we see them without uh, Higgins. They're always a different team without yeah. one of those two receivers. Big time. And, you know, if those guys get to a point, like if you Trey Hendrickson, you're like, you, all of a sudden you're five and eight. Mm-hmm. You're like, all right. This yeah, right. What this am I isn't doing going here? anywhere. I've got I've got nine sacks. People know I can rush the passer. Yeah, I got good tape. Uh, my hamstring's a little sore. The, these guys don't want to sign us. So, all right, I think they're a very volatile team. Yeah. But you win this week, you start building something back up. They could be dangerous. We know they're good. So, the Steelers are at Washington on November tenth. Yeah. Will they be favored or an underdog in that game? Dog. I don't think it'll be by a lot. I probably will pick them, though. I haven't given it a whole lot of thought, but I think this buy is coming at a really good time. I think it does, for... too. They're going to get some bodies back. I think they're the more physical team than Washington. Yeah, and I think just Washington's a nice story. I'm not saying they're a bad coaching staff, but how do you deal with they're success? They're a little ahead of the curve right yeah, Exactly, now. exactly. Yeah. Like, And frankly, I'd probably have Washington ahead of Pittsburgh on the power ranks right now. I'm not even saying the Steelers are better. I'm not sh- sure that would, but... They're being the same tier. I trust the coaching staff way, way more. That's what I'm saying. And, like, Cam Hayward, I'm sure, really will appreciate this buy. And I guarantee their run defense will be better because I'm sure that's going to be a point of emphasis in that building when they get back. So I probably will pick the Steelers in that game, but I bet they're a dog. And I don't know. I mean, we start looking at Washington and who they've beaten. Uh, or who it has beaten, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that it's a, a murderer's row of, uh, boy, they really beat some good teams here. No. Um, where are they at here? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Are they at home this week or are they on the road? Why can't I find more? I'm excited to dig into Daniels more. Yeah, I want to I want to watch more. I them. really Maybe like I'll... the way their O-line plays. That shocks me. I thought their O-line would be terrible, but it's really good. So their wins, they lost to the Buccaneers in week one okay. by 17. And we didn't think of anything of it because that's what we expected yeah. of Washington. They then beat the Giants 21-18 because, or, uh, because the Giants didn't have a kicker. Yeah. They should have been 0-2. They probably should have started 0-2, yeah. Then they beat the Bengals 38-33. That's when people still, oh, that's maybe. Oh, wow, they beat yeah. the Bengals, right. As Bengals. we now know, right. not the same thing, beat the Cardinals 42-14. to That was impressive. Yeah. Because I thought that was a very even game at the time. I thought no defense, tons of offense. Beat the Browns 34-13. Doesn't Again, so now bad. we right, know. Right, right. If looking back on it, it's like, oh, all right. Yeah, so Watson could, can't complete passes. Lost to the Ravens, thirty to twenty-three. They were competitive in that game. Yeah, they were. They hung around. I mean, that was also a kind of a statement game. Beat the Panthers forty to seven, but everybody sure. beats the Panthers forty to seven. Yep, yep, yep. And then they beat the Bears eighteen fifteen last week on a hail mary. It's not as great. It's it's it's. It's again. It's a great story. They're six and two. We'll talk all kinds yep. of you know about them next week. I mean, if we just laid out, the, if if we could have. Went back in the time machine to before week one and played that last minute of what you said to every Commanders fan. They'd be like, sign me wow, up. Oh, yeah. yeah right, how about that? Great, We're 6-2, you know? and two, baby. Right. Uh, but it's kind of smoke and mirrors right it's now. It's not the most impressive 6-2. and two. Yes. Yeah. All right. Then you get the Ravens the following week here. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to split with the Ravens. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to come. Or, yeah, I think I, that's I'm a with one you. one situation. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, but – it could be here, you win here and lose down there, or vice mm-hmm. versa. Those teams, it doesn't really matter where they play. Right. But I don't see the Ravens sweeping the Steelers this year, nor do I, I see either. the Steelers sweeping the Ravens. I think that's going to be a split. Yeah. And you'd be happy with that. I, I'll take it, yeah. I think the Ravens are a really, really good team. Then on the short week, and this is where it's troublesome, because after both Ravens games, yeah. the Steelers play on a short week. That's terrible. The NFL... I, I can understand why why Art Rooney the second was upset about this particular schedule because mm-hmm. not only did you, are all your AFC North games backloaded at the end of the season, you don't give me a rest. You're getting them on twice, two short week games like this yeah. in the second half, and one of them is going to bite you. Yeah, um, I don't think that it will be the Browns though. The other one's the Chiefs, right? Yeah, yeah I'm going to pick the Chiefs. Um, um, but the Browns up there on a Thursday night. Won't be a, won't be an easy game. No, the, the that place might be, be hopping. first one to thirteen type yeah. of thing too. And are the Browns? Is their line getting better? Is it healthy again? I have no clue where to think the 
to project where the Browns will be at, at that at the, point. At the same time, the, the Steelers' defensive line has an advantage over Cleveland's offensive line, even when Cleveland's offensive line yeah. is completely healthy. And they're still short on weapons, I mean, yeah. without Cooper. And, you know, I Steelers are so good in the turnover department. And Chubb just doesn't look. I'm wondering what he looks like this week. It was yeah. last week the rust knocked off, and now he looks good. He's been or back two is, weeks now. Is it? Is it? Okay. Yeah. But I do think the Browns' D will be there to play on a primetime game. It will be oh, yeah. Party. There yeah. won't be a lot of points in that one. Now, you do get the rest coming out of that game against the Browns. Mm-hmm. Because then you're at Cincinnati on December 1st. I like their chances in that one. Yeah. that's the, the, the Because of the way their schedule sets up, the Steelers only play three games in the month of November. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're off. They don't start for a while. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. Uh, December like cram a bunch in. A- yeah, December first, you play. You play now. You play. You know, a bunch of games in December. But, sure. Uh, at the Bengals on December first. I'm liking how that sets up. Off ten days rest. Who knows where the Bengals are at? Yeah, you're talking a month from now. They could have four or five more losses. Mm-hmm. It could be. Yeah, it could be bad. Then you get the Browns again. So twice in three weeks against Cleveland here, December eighth. I don't love that. No, I don't love that either. I was going to say, I think they split with the Ravens and go 3-1 and one against Ohio. But I'm leaning more towards 2-2 two and two against Ohio. Because I hate that short week in Cleveland. I hate, I, the I short like, week in Cleveland is not good at all. No. no. I'm with you. Um, I think they can win at Cincinnati. I, I think they're a bad matchup for Cincinnati mm-hmm. in terms of their – They'll be physical, and Cincinnati's pretty soft. They will run the ball down Cincinnati's throat. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Then you get Cleveland again. Then it's at Philadelphia. I hate that one. I've I've covered the Steelers for 33 years. It's my 33rd year. I don't know that I've ever seen them win in Philadelphia, (laughs) even in the preseason. (laughs) It doesn't happen a ton, but it— I mean, the, the trip doesn't happen. I've seen some really good right. Steeler teams go out there and see watch Ben Roethlisberger get sacked nine times yeah. on a super team that went and won the Super Bowl. Yeah, he gets sacked nine times. There's got to be something to that. I also think Philly's good. Yeah, you know, Barkley could have a big day. Brown and Smith are a handful. It's a good O line. Yeah, I like the Eagles in that one. Uh, then you're at the Ravens. Okay, six again, days I, later, I again, I think they split. Yeah, uh, that's that's a Saturday game. Then you get the Chiefs. That's a short, yeah. Yeah. Then you get the Chiefs on Christmas Day, one o'clock Christmas Day. I don't like that at all. I don't know how motivated the Chiefs are going to be. At I that know. Point, I think that's interesting. And what's their rest? They're in the same. All the teams that play Christmas Day also play Saturday that week. Oh right, right. So they all have the same amount of rest. Yeah, you just, you just right, right, right. They, we play you the duty the opposite way. I don't love that it's after a Ravens game though. No, not at all. I mean, the, the other one is the short. The other half post Ravens game is the short week in Cleveland. Yeah, Ugh. two short weeks after playing the after Ravens. Baltimore, and one of them's two time back to back champ. Yeah, after maybe your most physical game of the of the season. Everyone Although I will say this, Mike Tomlin does as good a job as any coach, I think, in the league of mitigating that stuff. By look, we're twelve games into this thing. Mm-hmm. I don't need to, you guys to do a lot in practice. It's oh but, sure. Sure. And it does help that you're playing the Browns after the first one. It's not a team that you're not going to be no, that part's good. familiar with. Right, right. That's if that was at Philadelphia. Well, that would geez. be awful, <laughs> yeah, which right. is what you're facing with the Chiefs. At least situation. it's here. And I think there's a little bit of that. Steers are good on Monday night. You know, it's a standalone game with a lot of eyes on it. Taylor Swift's in the house, and who knows what other shenanigans are going on that day. But I'm going to pick the Chiefs probably. Yeah, I, pr- I can't imagine they're resting people yet. I probably will as well, but I'm just saying, don't be surprised if that's a game that the Steelers win. Oh, it's a winnable game, yeah. You know, Absolutely. Chiefs got to travel on Christmas Eve. Nobody's happy about right, it. Then right. you got to get up. It's Christmas morning. You're, you're, you have a five game lead in the video division. game. You're video timing with your kids as they're opening presents. Mm-hmm. And, you know, your your mind's not necessarily in it. I get to your all point. That, yeah. You're up. You're up five games in the division. So, right. You know, let's just get to the postseason. Make some goal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then the Bengals, last uh, game of the season. That's here. That's here. The time on that one has yet to be determined. Um, I like the Steelers in that one. The Bengals could be packing it in. I would say there's a real good chance they have nothing to play for. Yeah. Yeah, Now, they'll still want to beat the Steelers. Yeah. But But even if Higgins and those guys are playing, 
they got other things on their mind too. Yeah, I mean, I doubt that the Bengals will be in it. Higgins might have a, my my hamstrings mm-hmm. tighten it up on me again. I I'm ready to go be a free. And agent. who knows? Maybe the Steelers don't even need it. I mean, yeah, you just don't they, know. Yeah, they could the, be locked in as the five. They could be locked in as the division champ. Who knows? That's the whole thing. With, you know, with this, there's, there's so much that can happen. Yeah. Um, you know, between now and then. So if that goes as, as we we think, I mean, I, I think the Steelers win ten or eleven games. I think there's at least three more losses. Yeah. Kansas City, Philly, Baltimore, another. You know. Yeah. Browns, one of those, or Bengals. Yeah, I, I think there's probably four more losses on the horizon. Looking at the Ravens' schedule, they got Denver this week, at Pittsburgh, at Los Angeles, which which LA. the Chargers, Harbaugh Bowl. Be a physical, yeah, yeah. Be a they fight. could lose that game. Oh, they could lose that game. Yeah. Uh, then they get Philadelphia at home. They could lose that game. At New York against the Giants, then they get the Steelers, then they're at Houston. Maybe Houston's figured some things out by then. They should have Nico I'd, Collins back by then. Yeah, I'd rather rather they got them then than now. And then they finish up against Cleveland at home. There's a few more losses on there. There's... They're a game behind the Steelers right now. Right, That's right. why that that loss last week was so huge for them. I don't know the Ravens' schedule well, but I know they get more rest advantage than any team out there. So I bet a couple of those are off a long week or some goofy things in their favor. Well, they play this week, uh, so they got Denver... Sunday this week. Then they got to go. Then they get Cincinnati at home on a Thursday night. Okay. And then they have a long. Break then they get the a long break one, right? between before they play the Steelers. Right. Then they get eight days because they play the Chargers on a Monday night. Back on Sunday against also the a Christmas team against the Eagles. Then they get their bye week before they go to the Giants on December fifteenth. Six days of rest before they play the Steelers. The same amount for the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then they got to come back and play Houston on the short week. I think both of those teams that play on the road on Christmas, on Christmas Day aren't going to love it. I'm not going to love it at all. No, mentally or physically. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a strain. That's asking a lot. Mm-hmm. The more I think about the Chiefs thing too, it's like, what are they really going to have to play for? Yeah, they're they're definitely going to have a several game lead in the West. So if the Steelers can split with the Ravens. Mm-hmm. That just um, the spl- a split with the Ravens plus is almost like winning two against them, right? Because you have a game in hand, and if you can handle the the the, the Ohio teams, you'll have a better division record because Baltimore's already lost to Cleveland once. That's a huge loss. Yeah, you just have to stay ahead or get. If you, know, you go four and two in the division, you should be okay. And one of them's the Browns, or one of them's the Ravens. The other thing, going two against the Ravens would be a problem. Yeah, the other thing about it is that that loss that Baltimore had to the Raiders. It's a conference. It's a loss. conference loss, right? That's gonna that might come back and bite them too. Steelers only one conference loss. Yeah, I think they'll probably get another with the Chiefs, another with the Ravens, and maybe one more. You end up maybe with four conference losses. But if if let's say the Ravens lose at Houston on Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. That evens that out. Or Chargers and Harbaugh Bowl. Or Char- or, yeah. Right, right, right. In, you know, in L.A. Games. Yeah. Um, they can't be looking forward to that one. I mean, they're, they got some tough road games upcoming here. Yeah. Houston could certainly take advantage of their past defense. Oh, with, no with doubt. Nico, yeah. You know, Especially with, with Nico yeah. back. Like, yeah. I'm not sure the Chargers will. They could. But the Bengals could. Yeah. I don't know about the Browns being able to. The Bengals, just, the Bengals won't be able to slow down their running game. The Chargers can. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, right. The Chargers will play them tough. Yeah. That'll be a close game. You just know that's going to be a close game. That's like Steelers, Bengal, or Steelers Ravens. Yeah. So it should be, I mean, it sets up for a very interesting second oh, half. Oh, 100%. I mean, they haven't played a, a, a division game yet. Yeah, it's amazing to me. Yeah, it's, it's the latest a team has ever gone without playing yeah. a division game. I think it's wrong. I do too. Yeah, I think it's wrong. Especially since you built this schedule and you've got the Steelers playing Cleveland twice in three weeks. Like yeah, you couldn't, yeah. you couldn't have put one of those Cleveland games week early two, in the season, yeah, or opening day or whatever, right? Just just to spread it out, and one of them's on a super short week. And yeah, I don't love that. Yeah, I can but, see why they're, con- like you said, Mr. Rooney was not happy. I no, I don't blame I him. I Think there's something to be complaining about. Absolutely, but um, Matt, that's going to do it for the the show this week. Yep, yep, yep. Another week in the books. When we come back on Monday, we will start focusing on the uh, Washington Commanders, and mm-hmm. we'll still talk a little more. Sure. First half of the season stuff because, well, we'll have some of that to, to go over here. Um, the Steelers should be – they'll have a practice in. We'll start to see, you know, Zach Frazier back on Monday. Is, is you know, 
Herbig back on Monday. Yep. Some of those kind of things that you expect to see happen. And they get an extra practice, basically, for yeah. Washington, too, right? Yeah. yeah. So they got that going for them, which is nice. Yeah, which is nice. And they should be nice and well-rested coming off of uh, I think they could use it. A full week Every off. Every good, but I, again, I a couple think guys I, back. Mike Tomlin just does a great job with that. Like, they could have practiced on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. He said, you know what, guys? Rest your bodies. Yeah. We're going to need everything. You, you know, get That's going to be a rough, tough half stretch. We just went yeah. through it, right? So we'll see where they're at when they come cool. out of this. But uh, for my partner, Matt Williamson, for Justin Miller here, right, I'm manning the Justin Miller hotline. For Tyler Vintmeyer, making sure our video gets out on YouTube. I am Dale Lolly. We thank you for listening to this edition of The Drive on the Steelers Audio Network. Steelers football happens here. The Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network.